No sports topic is out of bounds. You found the MN Sports Blitz. Along with former Minnesota Vikings linebacker Chad Greenway, here's Joel Niemeyer. And good day. Welcome again to another edition of the MN Scores Blitz. I am Joel and uh, joined by former Vikings linebacker Chad Greenway. Hello to you, sir. Hey, how's it going this week? Doing very well. And uh, boy, for you guys and, and, and MN Scores, I mean, it seems, it, just from, from me being on the outside looking in, it seems like you guys are getting some momentum. Like there's a there's a real need that you guys kind of have uh, have found here. Yeah, from an app standpoint, it's been incredible. The users we've seen, we've seen upticks in numbers week after week, uh, which means the word is spreading amongst, you know, families and high school kids, and and uh, which is great to see. We feel like we're bringing, a, you know, an immediate service to, to high school parents and fans, and, and not just in the football world, in the, in the volleyball world as well right now this fall. So uh, it's been really fun to, to see the progress, to see the growth, um, and then just to kind of hear people talking about it and spreading the word. So um pretty exciting times in the app world right now and and uh we're happy that so many people are enjoying it and, and again the more people that jump on whether it be businesses um uh, that want to advertise through us or folks jumping on and, and want to be a fan uh, who's updating other fans of the, of the team um a lot of interest in, in people jumping on board and just being a part of our little team I know for me, I've I've used uh, the the app at both my volleyball and football broadcast, just kind of keeping up with some area teams and being able to give in game updates. And, and and not everybody's radio like 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 you and I are, but they just you know you still want to get those live updates and figure out what teams doing what and when. And it's it's going well right now. Yeah, it was funny because we started uh, when football you know started on Friday about you know obviously most games were at seven p.m. We did a big screen grab of, of the majority of team of games going on in Minnesota, and at about 7:05, so five minutes after the games were started, we were starting to see a lot of fans that were jumping on and updating. You know, the game had started, so the clock was moving. Um, the watch links, the streaming links, were all built into the schedules, which means that you know we're doing some of that on the back end as a team. Um, but then a lot of this is being done by by folks out in the communities now, whether it be administrators at school, teachers, coaches. Um, or parents, and that's the part where it really gets fun. Um, and I think, you know, in the volleyball part too, it, it's so it, it can be hard to track scores and get scores and get information. So that network that we're building, you know, from team to team and town to town is really growing. Um, and then some new features. So we're, we're added in the, the polls now are added in. If you look, if you click on the standings tab, you can find all your polls, um, section rankings, um, and that's all based off of. Um, the, the rankings in our app are all based off of our own PowerPoint system um, that we're bringing over from South Dakota. So that's going to be somewhat of a, I guess you can call it a competitor of the QRF system, um, which is going to be fun to track and see how, how people like that. And then obviously the polls we pull from the AP and, and how that's voted upon, whether it be through the coaches poll or, or other polls. So a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun features that we're adding in and continue to look at new, new things to add, you know, every week. And for folks out there, if you're if you're if you're interested, it is at uh, most. I, would, I think it's at, at everybody's uh, phone or or tablets, App Store or whatever you have, Google Play, Apple, whatever. I would guess it's it out. It's at all of those. It is. Yep, we are available on all on all different uh, app stores you can find. So, yep, go find us. Let's uh, let's talk some sports now, and I want to start uh, with baseball as the uh, twin season is uh, winding down here in the last uh, week and a half of the season. And, and, and when you have a season like the Twins have had, they came in with huge expectations, kind of fall flat on their face. I mean, as 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 a former pro athlete yourself, how tough can a season like this be when you've expected big things and it didn't really happen? Yeah, you know, I definitely was a part of different teams that had that going on. I mean, specifically, I think of the 2011 team um, where with McNabb coming in and the things that we were excited about and, and looking forward to and, and just didn't it just didn't pan out, didn't play out, and, and you end up having a kind of a tough season. Um, you look back at that and, you know, it, it certainly teaches you a lot as an athlete and, and within your own career, learn how to appreciate wins and appreciate good seasons and great teammates. But from an organization standpoint, you obviously have to jump into the mentality of, okay, what are we going to do? Is this time to clean house? Is this time to change the mentality in our, in our approach? Um, you know, in the baseball world, do we need to get younger? Do we need to find more pitching? Like, what, where, are those, where are those weaknesses and, and what, what happened? Because the expectations, obviously coming off of a big season the year before um, and, and really playing some really good baseball, 
then going to, you know, just not be able to find consistent pitching, not be able to get the run support that they were, had been so used to the last few years. It will be interesting to see the approach this offseason. From from a player standpoint, it is, I mean, with the Twins have kind of been playing out the stretch for a while now here. Can it can it be tough to 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 get up for a game knowing that your result really doesn't matter in in standings? <laughs> yeah, it can be very hard. Uh, it can be a real challenge, I think, to get yourself motivated to want to go play. And you know, even though that you're obviously a professional, and you want to go out there and you're getting you're getting paid to do it. You know, most people would love to get paid to play baseball or to play a sport that they love. Uh, so it's hard to complain, but it is hard, you know, especially with the grind the MLB season is. Um, so many, so many games, so much travel, so much time on the road. When you're in a grinder season, when you know there's no light at the end of the tunnel where the team's going to have success, um, it can really be a trudge, just trudging through the season and kind of be tough. So, um, yeah, you got to give respect to the guys for going out and continue to battle, continue to play hard. Um, obviously, have their pride and they're playing for their own career. So it's good to see they're still doing that. When when you have a season like this and you enter the off season like they're going to hear in about a week and a half, do do you want to just get away from from everything? It's like okay, I don't want to focus on my sport at all for X amount of time, or vice versa. Do you are you excited? Like okay, no, I want to change. I want to change this next year, so I want to get going as quick as possible. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a combination of both. You know, I, the, the the couple interesting things is you're motivated because you want to improve your own individual game, right? I think you always leave a season with, you know, 5, 10, 15 things you want to work on. And your goal that all season is to work on them to improve the next year, especially if you're in a position when you know you're going to be back with the organization and back with the team. Now you're going to have guys that are going to go into the off season and not know what their future is going to be. And that can be really an anxious time. But first and foremost, get away from the season. Get away from it a few weeks away kind of go take a vacation, go find, go see your family, um, you know, and, and really get away from it men- mentally and then refresh, regroup, find your groove and go back and get to work. And I think that's what great, great um, pros will do. And you'll see guys that aren't as good a pros that'll be you know, partying all off season, having a good time and let the chips fall where they may. Well, th- those things tend to not work out very well. I'd like to say let's let's move to a a more happier sports topic, but Vikings football. As <laughs> we go into the uh, the uh, week three here for the NFL, boy, zero and two start for the Vikings. And I know, you know, everybody say, well, just two or three plays away from being two and zero, but the fact is they're zero and two, and they're not looking great right now. You know, you, you got to, you got to, you know, life on the road in the NFL is a tough one. I mean, it, it really is different than any other sport when you go on the road. It's, 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 you know, if you look at the season in the NFL and in the normal season when you have eight consistent road games, you know, I know we have a 17th game now, you're going to add a ninth in some cases. Um, you know, you looked at that and say, okay, can we go 500? Can we go four and four on the road? If you can do that and then go six and two, seven and one at home, you know, you're a playoff team. And you, you got to look. I looked at those first two games and say, okay, this is not the way we want to start, but you have to get to one and one. Just get to one and one, get the Seahawks come to town, get the home field advantage, you know, on our favor. We're not going out to Seattle where Seattle's a much better team out there. Um, you know, it didn't happen. But what, what I saw was, was I saw massive improvements from week one to week two in a lot of different areas. I thought the offensive line played as well as you can expect against a really good defensive line. Um, don't love what we're doing in the back end covering people right now. I just really don't. I love what we've gotten out of Nick Vigil. So there's so many good, so much bad. Um, but the reality was is I think Arizona's a good football team. You know, the weapons they have, the, the, the issues that present themselves with Kyler Murray, that defensive line, um, the athletes they have in the back end of their defense, that's, you know, there, there's good and bad losses. Cincinnati was a bad loss. Arizona was a good loss and a loss you can take a lot from. And, and again, you can't look at week two in the NFL and say, well, this is over. Now, if it's week four, five, and six, and we're having these same conversations about we're not, we can't get off the schneid, we can't get a win, well, we have major, major concerns. But what that does is it makes this week essentially must win. I mean, you're in week three, and you have to win a football game. You have to find a way. And you love what the team did to put themselves in position to get the kick. Kick wasn't made. We know the long history of the, of the Vikings kickers and, and important kicks. It just it just wasn't made, and um, it's not an excuse. You got to make the kick, you know. And he knows it. The team knows it. Everybody knows it. Uh, but it didn't happen. So there's only one thing to do. That's to move on. Find your find your footing in week three. If you do that, you know, win cures everything in the NFL. Go get a win. Then you're gonna look. Can we put two together? Then you're back to 500, and and you know what? You're probably gonna be in the mix. And the way the NFC North is looking right now, we're not gonna. You know, we're 
it's not going to have to play perfect football to win this division. That's just, uh, uh, this is not going to have to happen. So um, big, massive, huge week this week. We need home field advantage to be a big factor. No, you're you're certainly familiar with uh, with with kickers from, from from your playing days, missing wide left, wide right, whatever whatever it was. From a defensive player or offensive player standpoint, can that affect you and how you play, or do you just try best you can to put that out of your mind? Yeah, I, mean, I try to control what I can control. I mean, it's hard for me to go um, be be negative towards. Um, a kicker if I'm not taking care of my own stuff. And I think that's one thing you have to think about is, you know, as a professional, I'm out there taking care of my own business and what I have to do. And if I can't get that done, then it's on me. Right. And I think you have to let the kicker live in his own world and let the puncher live in his own world. And, and I think you have to do that because that's just the way, you know, that's that you're a professional now. I can't go um, let somebody else's mistakes or somebody else's miss affect my game. And that's kind of how I looked at it. Uh, silver lining for me, uh, maybe the most surprising start, because you, you know about Dalvin Cook, you know about Justin Jefferson, you know about all these weapons, but boy, K.J. Osborne these first couple weeks, not he, he's had a very, he's had an eye-opening start for me. Yeah, I mean, look at the catches he made on those big, that big drive, that the got to have it situation at the end of the game, um, made some really tough catches on those slants, um, and I thought catches that you expect a third receiver in the NFL to make, and a guy that did it made it look easy. We move the chains and move on, and you end up getting to that spot where you where you can you know take that kick. And I think uh, really nice to see him step in. Really nice to see guys who get an opportunity step up and, and take advantage of it. So um, a lot of good stuff coming from him. This week, you got uh, the uh, Seattle Seahawks for the uh, Vikings. Uh, what do you see? You know, when, when the Vikings take on Russell Wilson, you usually see some pretty good play out of the quarterback. Yeah, he's going to be very tough. You know, I think it's nice coming off of, of a week where you see um, Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray is probably a, you know, I'm not sure if he's a better version, but he's just as athletic. He's just as quick and causes a lot of problems. Probably not as good out of the pocket as Russell Wilson is going to probably be, you know, potentially be a Hall of Fame player. Um, so reality is, 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 uh, you know, it doesn't get any easier. But, you know, this is the NFL. It's not supposed to. So um, he's going to have his own set of issues that we have to deal with when it comes to him. And, um, you know, I think you're going to deal with it with a, a more veteran team, but also a team that isn't isn't as solid as they've probably been the last five years. Um, a, a, an opportunity here to get a win at home um, against, yes, a very good football team, a team from the NFC West after we just play, obviously, another good, good NFC West team, the Cards, and, and almost get them at their place. So, you know what? It's, it's a winnable game. We have to take care of our own home. If we do that, we'll be in a much better spot this week, uh, this time next week. Week four, it's the uh, Cleveland Browns, and it, it's it's been nice to see. I mean, because uh, one of our workers here is the probably the biggest Cleveland Browns fan in the state of Minnesota, so I've I've known about how the Browns and their uh, failures over the years. So it's nice to see them get uh, get a good team. But boy, in, in week four, the Browns present a tough challenge for the Vikings. Oh, yeah. I mean, their style of play is going to fit right into kind of what we're doing. They want to run the football, play good defense. That is going to be an absolute nail-biter, an absolute just dogfight. I cannot wait to, for that game to come in. That's, I'm pretty sure Kevin. that's the weekend Kevin Williams is being inducted into the Ring of Honor, um, which is going to be a fun weekend in itself. So uh, really looking forward to uh, to that weekend and that game. Sounds good. Hey, we'll, we'll check in again, and uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, checking in on MN scores as well. You bet. Yeah, thanks for giving us the time on uh, MNN Scores. And, and uh, any of you listeners out there that uh, that want to learn more, go check out the app. It's free to download. You can surf around. Um, put the little star logo after you search for your favorite high school team or multiple high school teams and uh, jump in, become a fan. If you're a business owner, uh, reach out to us and, and see how you can advertise directly to the schools um, that, you, that you live and reside in. So um, thanks again for the time, and, and can't wait to talk to you the next couple of weeks. Sounds good, Chad. Chad Greenway and the MN Scores Blitz. The MN Sports Blitz has been produced by KDUZ, KARP, KGLB, and the Ingstad Minnesota Radio Network. Complete episodes are available on our website and on YouTube.